Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about Ricky. Specifically the build where people are going Battle Fury into Aghanim Scepter. This build is absolutely broken. No, I'm not just saying that. Well, you know, what's funny is I looked at Dota 2 Pro Tracker, and the win rate, I'll be honest, it's not through the roof. However, I still want to make the video because it's being picked by pro teams, and Ricky tends to be a very strong hero in your average pub. And frankly, I think that's gonna help you guys a lot. So if you're excited for this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into it. And can you guys take a guess at who we're gonna be looking at today? Take a guess. It's Arteezy. Yes, we're gonna be looking at Arteezy on the Ricky here. We're gonna see how he plays. And yes, he does die quite a bit this game. If you look at the enemy team, honestly, I don't think it's a great Ricky game in terms of staying alive. The reason why I say that is there's a lot of magical damage and that tends to be the counter to Ricky. On top of that, Roots in general disables counter him as well. For instance, Puck's Dream Coil is very good against Ricky. However, Ricky also counters Puck, so it goes both ways. By the way, by the way, do you guys know that all the videos I make aren't here on YouTube? <laughs> I know you can't believe it. You just, you almost just fell out of your chair. I understand. Stay safe. But it's very important you go click the link down below and you get your Game Leap sub right now we post thousands of videos that are going to help you get to the next rank and no i'm not just saying that i mean it i mean it in fact i've, I've talked to like it, it was really nice actually um I, I had like multiple people in the last few days reach out and thank me for how much you know the videos and the website has helped them which is awesome you know i genuinely appreciate when people do that because obviously sometimes it's, it's hard to know how many people i'm helping and who i'm helping and make a connection with them so i do appreciate that and you know, I'm just happy that the website does help people gain rank. But all right, let's get into the Ricky gameplay. So first things first, he does have very um, greedy items. You might be saying, oh my god, Speed, where's this region and, and stats? Well, he's landing with an Abaddon, and that's one thing to note. Because he has an Abaddon, he can skimp a little bit on the regen. It's a good Dota tip in general. For a bit, Abaddon was a very, very, very popular 5. Not nearly as much now, but when it was, you would see Animage players that didn't even buy Tangos. They would literally get shared Tangos. And that was it, right? They would, th th that was the entire game plan. And so that's why he's doing this here. The next thing you can see, which is quite the strategy here, is literally with this Aphotic Shield from the Abaddon, he instantly goes in. Now, why is this sort of a viable strategy other than the fact that Aphotic Shield is a very good spell for trading? Well, what I'd like to say is that Ricky has some of the best base stats in all of Dota. His HP isn't necessarily that high, it's not terrible, but what is important to note is his general stats. He has very high HP regen, he has very high armor at 6, and very high movement speed. Some of the highest movement speed in Dota. I don't know why, but he just does. He just does. And therefore, trading early with Ricky, it's not necessarily the best because you do have a low HP pool and you struggle against nukes, but if you have something like a Photic Shield or an Undying to heal you, it's definitely a good idea to trade. On top of that, I'd like to show off the base region here. He has 4.7 at level 1, uh, which is insane. That's like, what, three-fifths of a tango or something like that, just constantly going. And so you can imagine that Ricky is going to be played in a very, very specific way most games. What is that specific way? That specific way is going to be just simply based around last hits, especially for the first three to five levels of Ricky. This is a hero that needs items to kill people on average. In this lane, as I said, he has Stain, and Stain is nice with Ricky, and the hero can put pressure with various lane dominators such as Witch Doctor and, and Enchantress, but in a lot of lanes, especially if you lack synergy with your support, which is very common in pubs, you want to put a main emphasis on simply hitting your timings. Your hero hits major spikes, especially when you hit six. That's when you can really just start killing people over and over again. So please, if you're going to pick Ricky Carry, do not put an emphasis on chasing people around nearly as much as you might see uh, RTZ doing in this game. Sure, it's good to pressure people, and I talked about the reasons why he can do it, but just, just make sure your CS is, is staying very high. That's the most important part, which I know sounds stupid, but sometimes people are like, Ricky, I have a bunch of mobility. I can just fight the entire lane, and then they have no last hits. Now, in terms of items, I really like what Arteezy buys, and you can generally copy this almost every game, if not every game. He goes for the Orb of Corrosion. Now, you might be saying, you know, what about Wraith Bands? Wraith Band is okay, and you can pick it up. I think a lot of players have just shifted away from Wraith Bands in general. And honestly, like, that's something I'm still trying to figure out for myself. Because to be honest, it's not like Wraith Band's just some horrible item. It's definitely good on certain heroes like Troll. I think that people just think that, like, Ricky is more about kiting in and out. And therefore, buying Wraith Bands and building up a ton of attack speed isn't necessarily that valuable. Now you're gonna see at the eight minute mark here, he's gonna start going extremely aggressive. 
And just to be clear, the reason for this is because he's level 6. On top of that, the puck is level 5, he has a very heavy item and level advantage against this puck, and this is where Ricky tends to shine. You can look here, he has 50 last hits, and 15 denies at minute 830, right? That's the reason why he has this huge XP lead. And now he's going to start to put in scene aggression. If we look at Blink Strike, for instance, what's so good about it? Why does it scale so well? Well, everything goes up. Cast range goes up, the damage goes up, and most importantly, the charge restore time goes all the way down to 10 seconds, and you have two of them, so it's essentially a 5 second cooldown, you know what I mean, you know, it's just like you always can blink strike, and it does 100 damage every single time. Now, let's talk about how to actually get kills as Ricky. When you are killing people as Ricky, it is very important to use your spells to close the gap. If you are blink striking just for damage, it is generally a bad idea. So let's look at this clip here. He blink strikes in. It's against the puck. Puck has a lot of mobility. Some heroes, you can literally walk right up to them and save the blink strike to gain extra auto attacks. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But he's going to hit this puck, right? He's kind of waiting to force out the spells. Puck goes for the orb. Obviously, he's going to chase the orb. He has the cast range, and he eventually will go in. He didn't want to get hit by uh, the avalanche there, so obviously he kites out. And then he's going to go for the blink strike. Right? Blink Strike always hits people in the back, by the way. I don't think people realize that, but it does. It's a, a consistent backstab. And unfortunately, he's going to have to kite out when the Bad Rider comes. So this is a much better example of the Blink Strike. As he finds the Snapfire here, you're going to notice he doesn't just instantly W. I've watched plenty of Ricky, and like so many players just click W here. No, the 100 damage is not nearly as valuable as being able to disengage or engage, you know, close the gap when you need to. And so he's going to walk up, get that auto attack off and continue to auto attack until right until she is out of range. You can see here he's going to use the, the tricks of the trade to finish off the kill. And now because he didn't commit his W earlier, he can use it to disengage if he was to need to. Next up, let's look at him split pushing. Why? Because I want you guys to push in waves. That That's it. I just I just want you to hit some creeps occasionally, you know, it's just a good thing to do. When you're going Battle Fury, obviously you need to be relatively greedy, and therefore you should do this as well in your games. You know, just spend a little bit of time when you're getting close to that Battle Fury, slow down the pace of the game, make sure you hit that timing. A lot of players, you know, they get caught up, right? Currently he's 3-0, he's popping off! Why doesn't he just keep killing them? Well, as I said, the enemy team does have a lot of ways to kill him, they have a lot of magical damage. And so instead of necessarily directly fighting into it, he'll push in some waves and then go do it. He'll try to force that rotation bottom, then go do it. And it's a very good habit to get into. But as you can see, he makes a very bizarre play here. I call it bizarre because I think most people wouldn't do it. It's not necessarily bad, it's just weird. He walks mid. Well, as I said, he can be ganked very easily. If he pushes bottom alone for too long, they might smoke gank him with a puck and he'll die. So instead, he'll show up and fight. And yeah, Ricky is very good at that, even with Battle Fury components. Sure, you're not as strong as if you were to have Defusal, but still, you do do a lot of damage. Aha, uh -huh, doo doo. Upcoming here is a beautiful display of spellcasting from Arteezy, but we're going to see the Fisher here. Now, this is close to a tier 2, Arteezy knows that, therefore he needs to finish the kill as soon as possible. On top of that, Tiny already knows the kill is coming, therefore it is proper for him to use the Blink Strike to close the gap, right? He wants to get the kill as fast as possible, so you'll see him do that here. Now we've reached the Avalanche coming, and therefore he's going to click the Tricks of the Trade behind him. Obviously he does not want to go to the left side of the Fisher and get lassoed, so he goes to the right, dodging the Avalanche, also allowing him to do a ton of damage to this Tiny, and finishes the kill. After he gets the kill, he backs up a little bit, right? doesn't want to die to the Kisses, and he's going to consider whether or not he wants to re-engage. Now, how can you know to re-engage or not? Well, it really depends on how many spells you have. Yes, your W is a very low cooldown, and so is your E. The E is also a... 12 second cooldown, but you need to keep in mind that if you don't have any of these, you generally just die. And therefore, he's going to be careful. It's under a tier 1, he doesn't want to get lassoed. However, he does see a bunch of heroes mid, and so that gives him the green light to go in. He'll hop in here and continue to try to go for the kill. Now, Battle Rider is a horrible matchup for Ricky, and I cannot stress this enough. In the early game, you despise this hero. It is absolutely miserable. Frankly, at all stages of the game, I think this is just a generally bad matchup for Ricky in general. And you can even see he's considering going in. You know, he's not exactly sure what he wants to do. He does have an Abaddon coming, so he's going to push his limits a little bit here. Um, but all in all, he can't really overextend and commit. Oh yeah, and then back to farming. Now once you have that Battle Fury, what are you going to do? You know how it is, you're going to go hit jungle camps, let's go. Well, yeah, you still actually do want to show up to fights, but remember, Battle Fury equals Ancients. That's generally true, almost always true, 
for like every single hero in Dota that builds Battle Fury. And you're going to see he does that quite a bit. It's just an efficient thing to do. He's playing it safe. Uh, as I said, he can die. I'm only repeating it because it's a very important thing to note this game. If he goes to sicko mode, like a lot of people do on Ricky, uh, when they're, you know, just playing their average pub and having a good game, he'll die. The enemy team knows just because he's 4-0 and has been killing them before, doesn't mean we'll have to stay like that. Now, why is Battle Fury good on Ricky in particular? Like, why not just play any other hero? Well, it's good with tricks at a trade, and it's particularly good with your Ags, which we'll see later on. But as he goes on this camp here, he's going to use the tricks at a trade. Obviously, he's going to backstab, and it allows you to cleave very, very safely. And in team fights, it's incredibly good as well. Now that he has Ags, what changes? What is the reason people are buying this item? Well, let's talk about it. It increases the duration, attacks, and cast range. It also allows you to target on an allied hero. Honestly, that you don't really usually do that. There are some cheesy combos, like, I guess it's not that cheesy, but you hop on a tide, you tricks it or trade on a tide, he blinks in, ravages, you know, that type of thing, or Dark Seer can vacuum, you know, and you get the cleave. But what's the most important about this is two things. It's the duration and attacks. It allows you to hit two people inside of the tricks of trade instead of one, which obviously severely amps the damage considering you're going to cleave off both of them as well. And you can see where this is going. You're hitting consistently. You can't be hit because you're in tricks at a trade and you're cleaving off all of it. And so it does a lot of damage and it's not really dangerous. And let's just take a quick look at this fight to see the general damage of tricks at a trade with Ags. By the way, 10 talent, 20 attack speed, 15 talent, 20 damage. Let's look at the fight. All right. As they go in here. We're just seeing a nice setup from his team. Just going to go immediately in with the tricks of the trade. The puck gets silenced and look at this damage. Two swipes from the tricks is nearly half of the puck's HP and three is half of bad riders. And you can see the pure damage that this actually does. Now, sure, his teammates were going in as well, but that was primarily him. Now, unfortunately, that fight somehow ended up going poorly at the end of the day. Uh, but hey, you can see the damage potential. The next thing I want to mention is once you get this Ags timer, please don't look at it as like, okay, this is my time to go. This is my time to all in. We're ending the game. Absolutely not. Ricky is a horrible tower sieger. If at any point in the game you find yourself hitting towers as Ricky, you're just throwing. And that's not fully true, but I just want to use it as like a, you know, a, a really, really strong statement just so people avoid towers. RTZ basically never hit a tower this game, and I recommend you do the same thing. Focus on creeps, focus on heroes, hit your timings. Towers will die naturally as the game progresses. It's not your job to end the game. On top of that, when you have Ags, you farm so fast, it's actually so fast. With the help of his Agatum Scepter, he'll get to his level 20 Blink Strike cast range talent. I honestly think the backstab multiplier is fine as well. The cast range just feels good. It just feels really good. By the way, look at him kill creep waves. I haven't shown an example yet, but I just want to show it so you can see it. Uh, as he walks mid here, look at this creep wave, where did it go? Wait. Oh! And yeah, often after the eggs, you're going to want to go Daedalus. Some games you need Manta. If the enemy team has a lot of like silences and stuff like that, you need to avoid. Go Manta. But if you're confident, you want to play around Vision, you got teammates to save you or whatever, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, oh my god, that is a huge trick set of trade. Let's see how much damage this actually does. This is, this is very, very cool. He might actually end up dying because of this, but let's look, let's look. He sees the smoke. Great reaction time. Tricks of the trade. Ooh. Ooh. This damage. Bad Rudder's half HP. Good smoke screen. By the way, quick tip. You can actually use smoke screen when you're in Tricks of the trade. So let's say they're camping you, waiting for it to end. You can still smoke screen them to silence them. Uh, it's a really good way to protect yourself. That did so much damage though. That was literally like, ooh. Ooh. That was like half HP from everyone, and then look at this bad rider. Oh my god. The, the amount of damage that Ricky does is actually ridiculous. It is actually ridiculous. Look at this. He goes on the bad rider, the backstab with the Daedalus, absolutely pops him, can't even get his BKB off in time, and that's a wrap. Beautifully done. Oh my god, he might actually... <laughs> he nearly just straight up dies to this, uh, this elk. And he actually does. Tough. Now eventually, as we get 41 minutes into the game, you'll hit your critical mass timing. What is that timing? It's your level 25 talent. Minus six seconds, tricks to the trade cooldown, which makes it, what's the duration? A three second duration, right? Three second duration on a six second cooldown. And you can imagine why that's good. 50% of the time, you can't be hit and you're killing everybody. It's really good. Now you might be wondering why he has a blink dagger. I actually think it's something that most players don't do, but it's definitely an option. You can blink out of tricks to the trade and it keeps you safe. It's kind of like Puck waning rift, I suppose. On top of that, it builds into Swift Blink, which is a good item right now. And now, as you can see here, the damage is starting to pile in. Puck goes in here for some unknown reason. 
supposedly just to cut the wave. He gets silenced, and then three shot by Arteezy. And now as the buybacks come out, he has to disengage. Keep in mind, your hero is not that tanky and will likely never be tanky in the game. So every time you cast tricks at a trade, you generally need to kite out. It's exactly what he does here. Now they do have a bat rider with a blink, so he gets caught. But you're going to see, as long as you can stay alive for long enough, or you get an item like Flicker to help you disengage, you can pump out damage. And as we continue to see, this level 25 talent puts in work, right? Really, before level 25, it's actually somewhat easy to die. You really have to play around your cooldowns and positioning very well. But once you hit level 25, the amount of time you're in tricks at a trade just makes you feel unkillable. And yeah, that's going to be about all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope you give Ricky a try. If you do, let me know. And I wish you the best in your games. And I'm out. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.